Hello there, welcome to this course. This is Kush Sharma and I'm so glad I've got a chance to teach you how to transform your landscape images using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Now, first of all, who am I? If you've not done my other courses, well, I'm a photography and videography instructor based out of a city called Pune in India, where since 2014, I run a company called Creative Pad Media and I have been teaching photography, videography and editing to my students through workshops, through online courses. I'm currently the author of 10 different photography, videography and editing courses that you can also try out if you happen to like this particular course. Now, before we start off with anything else, I just want to quickly address the current situation that we are in. So we are, you know, in amidst this coronavirus pandemic. So first of all, before we start off with anything, I hope that you and your family are safe and healthy. It just shows, this whole situation just shows that things all things are not under our control and we just have to make the best and manage, right? But I'll tell you what is under your control. The thing that is under your control is editing your landscape shots. And that is exactly what we are going to learn in this course because we are going to move seamlessly between Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop and we are going to follow a standardized workflow process and completely go make our images go from boring and dull to just wow and appealing all right so i hope that you are excited now there are a couple of points that i want to talk about when it comes to editing you can have an opinion right people have all sorts of opinions when it comes to editing and post processing of different types of photography but let me tell you one thing when it comes to landscape photography you really cannot have an opinion trust me on that you have to edit your landscape shots one percent and the reason for that is that your camera sensor first of all is not capable of capturing the entire dynamic range of the shot by that I mean it some of the highlights will not be captured some of the details in the shadows will not be captured no matter which DSLR or mirrorless camera you have got you can even have those high-end ones they'll do a better job than the entry-level ones obviously but still they will not be able to reproduce what your eye saw and you will have to do that in editing. There's no choice and you're gonna find, and you're gonna actually see this happening inside the course. The second important point is that if you've done landscape photography, and I'm sure you must have if you've taken this course, you must have noticed and experienced that it can be pretty challenging and frustrating at times because things just don't go according to our plan because landscapes, the weather, and all these natural things are not under our control. So you must have seen that sometimes you go expecting a certain type of weather, certain type of cloud patterns to be there, but when you reach your location, you spend all the time and effort, you carry all your equipment, and boom, <laughs> something just goes wrong, right? This happens a lot, and this is one of the most frustrating aspects of doing landscape photography. Well, if you become a person who can do editing in a correct way, who knows the different important tools and functions, especially in Photoshop, like we're gonna see in this course, what you'll realize is that doing this course and learning landscape editing actually makes you a very relaxed and a stress-free landscape photographer and it'll actually make you fall in love with landscape photography even more. And the reason for that is because you'll be able to do things which normal photographers cannot. For example, you'll be able to form composites. You'll be able to do manipulation inside Photoshop. So let's say, just an example, you go out there, you're taking a shot, you spent all that time and effort, but there was something wrong in the sky. Maybe it was too plain or maybe it was too overcast and it just is decreasing the appeal of your overall shot. You've got a nice foreground, but the background is not good, right? So we'll be seeing some very challenging sky replacements in this course, which will just make you understand that it is possible to shoot another part of the sky, shoot a foreground from a different area, and then just combine these two together. And of course, it's gonna be a challenge because some of the, these editing manipulations won't be very easy, but that's my job. I will teach you how to do that in a very, very step-by-step -step and correct manner. But basically, it will enable you as a landscape photographer to really, and I mean this, really shoot in any situation. So how does that make you feel? Trust me, this is going to make you really, really fall in love with landscape photography because it's going to open up your creative capability which other photographers won't have when it comes to landscape photography. And even the best of the best landscape photographers, they always edit their shots and there's nothing wrong with that provided you do it in the correct manner. 
All right, so these were the points that I wanted to make regarding the editing part. Now, when it comes to the course, there's just quickly a couple of points I want to make. First of all, as always with our other editing courses, you get access to the images. In fact, in this course, I've given my own raw images to you so that you can edit them along with me. We are going to show you the edits from start to end for each image. This is something which we have not done in any of our courses, except for probably portrait retouching for beginners, where also I teach you everything from start to end. But here also each edit will be shown its, in its entirety from A to Z. So you'll understand what are the steps you need to take. Talking about steps, I come to the next important point, which is for the first time in any of our courses, we are providing you in this course with a workflow document. So that document has all the steps laid out in a nice format, in a standardized format. And you just check. It's like a checklist. You go to the first step, you do this in Lightroom. You go to the second step, you do this in Photoshop. And we keep on moving between Lightroom and Photoshop following all these steps. And by the time you are done with this course, you would have gone through these standard steps so often that it'll just become second nature for you and you'll be able to apply these standard steps to your own shots. That is the key. Learning the entire workflow of moving between Lightroom and Photoshop and knowing what steps to take and when to take them. Now I know I'm talking a lot, enough talk for now. You know the type of guy I am. If, I, if you've done my other courses, I like to get straight into action. So, so from the next video onwards, first of all, I'm gonna show you how to access your images. Then I'm gonna show you how to access your workflow document and then boom, we'll be starting with this course. So I'll see you there, bye for now.